Welcome back to my channel, Adventures in America. If you are new to my channel, my name is Jocelyn, and for today's topic, I'm going to discuss the latest U.S. travel restrictions as of January 26 of 2022. Who are allowed to enter the U.S.? Also, what are the entry requirements? The vaccines acceptable and there are updated guidelines regarding quarantine requirements. For U.S. citizens, U.S. nationals, lawful permanent residents, and immigrants, when you travel to the U.S. by air, you are required to show a negative COVID-19 test result or documentation of recovery from COVID-19 before you board your flight. Proof of vaccination is not required. Immigrants to the U.S. who are already green card holders are not required to get vaccinated. However, if you are applying to enter the U.S. as immigrant, you are required to have a medical examination that includes a COVID-19 vaccination before issued an immigrant visa. Please take note that the U.S. has officially lifted the travel ban effective December 31st. Or non-immigrants and seeking to enter the U.S. are required to show proof of being fully vaccinated before flight to the U.S. Otherwise, you will be denied entry or denied boarding. And there are entry requirements for non-U.S. citizens. The first requirement is that you must be fully vaccinated. However, there are exceptions. Children below 18 do not need to be vaccinated. Also, there are covered exemptions. Now, you must be fully vaccinated and you must have a one-day negative test for two years old and above. Or you must be fully vaccinated and you must have proof of recovery from COVID within 90 days of flying. You must have a letter and proof of COVID-19 infection. This is based on the CDC rules. Now, is antigen acceptable in the U.S.? The answer is yes. You must be tested with a viral test to look for current infection. This includes an antigen test or nucleic acid amplification test or NAAT. Phrases indicating a test is an antigen test could include but are not limited to rapid antigen test or viral antigen test or other phrases of antigen tests. Also, other acceptable tests are RT-PCR test and isothermal amplification tests such as NEAR, TMA, LAMP, HDA, CRISPR, or SDA. Are self-administered tests acceptable in the U.S.? The answer is yes. However, there are four specific requirements. Here are the requirements. regardless of citizenship or vaccination status will be required to show a negative pre-departure COVID-19 viral test taken the day before they board their flight to the United States. For example, a passenger whose flight to the U.S. is at any time on a Sunday would need to have a negative test taken at any time on Saturday. Now, what is the rule for unvaccinated Americans and legal permanent residents? Under the new travel system starting December 6, unvaccinated Americans and legal permanent residents are allowed to enter the country with a test taken within one day of departing for the U.S. The new rule will make the testing time frame one day for everyone. Does one day mean 24 hours? The answer is no. Per the CDC, the one day time frame is used to provide more flexibility to the air passenger and aircraft operator. Acceptance of the test does not depend on the time of the flight or time of the day. For example, if your flight is 1 p.m. on a Friday, you can board the plane with a negative test taken anytime on the prior Thursday. 
Now, does the testing requirement apply to children? The answer is yes. It applies to all air passenger two years or older flying into the U.S. If you are unable to produce a one-day negative test because you were recently infected, here is the proof of recovery requirement. The proof of recovery must be within 90 days of flying to the U.S. If you recently recovered from COVID-19, you may instead travel with documentation of recovery from COVID-19. That is, you must have a positive viral test result on a sample taken no more than 90 days before the flight's departure from a foreign country and a letter from a licensed health care provider or a public health official stating that you were cleared for travel. The document of recovery from COVID-19 means that the passenger has presented documentation of a positive test result and a signed letter on official letterhead that contains the name, address, and phone number of a licensed healthcare provider or public health official stating that the passenger has been cleared for travel and the positive test occurred within the last three months or 90 days prior to flight departure to the U.S. And personal identifiers on the positive test result and signed letter match the personal identifiers on the passenger's passport or other travel documents. And the test must be a viral test and the test result states positive. All foreign travelers must provide official vaccination documentation and airlines will confirm that the last dose was at least two weeks prior to the travel date. There are also specific information regarding official documentation. First, the personal identifiers such as your name or date of birth must match the personal identifiers on the travel documents. You must also name the official source and the vaccine manufacturer and the date of vaccination. You must also prove that you are fully vaccinated depending on the type of vaccine that you received, whether it is a single dose or a two dose series of vaccine. Also, if you received mixed vaccines, you will also be considered fully vaccinated. If not, you will be denied boarding. Now, how the 14 days are calculated? Your last dose must have been given a full 14 days before the day you board your flight to the U.S. The vaccines must be approved either by the U.S. FDA or by the World Health Organization for emergency use. Here are the approved vaccines by the U.S. FDA, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and Moderna. Now, here are the approved vaccines for emergency use by the World Health Organization, Pfizer or BioNTech, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Covaxin, Covishield, Sinopharm, and Sinovac. The newly approved is Covaxin. Because there are countries around the world who administered mix and match vaccines, it will also be acceptable and you will also be considered as fully vaccinated by the CDC. Now, which vaccines are not accepted in the U.S.? First is Sputnik V. Second, Novavax, and third, Abdallah, and fourth, Soberana. These are the not approved vaccines in the U.S. Now, let's talk about the proof of vaccination that you can present when traveling to the U.S. There are several options or acceptable documents that you can present when boarding. Now, here are the list of acceptable proof of vaccination. You can present a verifiable record such as a digital or paper. As an example, you can present a certificate of vaccination with a digital QR code. Some examples are those issued by the United Kingdom or European Union. You can also present non-verifiable paper records such as a printout of COVID-19 vaccination record. Another proof of vaccination that you can present is unverifiable digital records. As an example, you can present digital copies of vaccination record or downloaded 
vaccine record, or vaccine certificate from an official source. Options for COVID vaccines for all non-citizens or non-immigrants. That individuals are persons on diplomatic or official foreign government travel. Also, children under 18 years of age. Also, persons with medical contraindications to COVID-19 vaccine. In addition, participants in certain COVID-19 vaccine trials Persons issued a humanitarian or emergency exception. Also, persons with valid visas except B1, B2 who are citizens of foreign country with limited COVID-19 vaccination. Also, members of the U.S. Armed Forces or their spouse or children under 18 years of age. In addition, C crew members traveling with a C1 and D non-immigrant visa. And persons whose entry would be in the national interest as determined by the Secretary of State or Secretary of Transportation. Now, if you fall under any of these exceptions, you will be required to attest that you are exempted from the requirement to present proof of being fully vaccinated against COVID-19. As a requirement, you will be tested with a viral test three to five days after arrival, and you will also self-quarantine for a full seven days and you will also self-isolate if you test positive. Even if you're exempted but you plan to stay in the U.S. for more than 60 days, you will have to attest that you will arrange to become fully vaccinated within 60 days of arriving in the U.S. or when medically appropriate unless you are too young for the vaccine. Also, for all U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents, Children under two years old do not need to be tested and there are also accommodations for people who have documented recovery from COVID-19. Masking will still be required when flying to the U.S., but those who are fully vaccinated, there is no quarantine. For those exempted from COVID-19 vaccine, non-tourist travelers from 50 countries with nationwide vaccination rates of 10% are exempted. If you are traveling to the U.S. and staying for more than 60 days, you will have to be vaccinated. Also, there are no religious exemptions for international travelers to avoid COVID-19 requirements. Because of the new travel system, airlines will collect personal information including a phone number and an email from all U.S.-bound passengers for contact tracing. Now here are the requirements after arrival in the US. For those vaccinated, there is no quarantine required after arrival. However, all travelers are recommended to get tested within three to five days after arrival in the US. Now, for those unvaccinated, all travelers are recommended to get tested and in addition, stay home for full seven days. Also, the Biden administration has extended the mask requirement until March 18 of 2022. First, masks can be either be manufactured or homemade and should be a solid piece of material without slits exhalation valves or punctures however there are certain categories of persons exempt from wearing a mask first children under the age of two second people of disabilities who cannot wear a mask or cannot safely wear a mask because of the disability as defined by the americans with disabilities act third People for whom wearing a mask would create a risk. Passengers to the U.S. are required to fill out the customs declaration from the airline. In addition, please submit or fill out the latest version of the CDC attestation form. Please also submit or fill out the U.S. Traveler Health Declaration form, which will be supplied by airline personnel. For allowed and prohibited items, please consult the TSA website. You can also enroll for TSA pre-check for a faster screening process today. Any US. other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.